Suppose that the woman doesn't go for annual visits and has a lump in her breast. Mm -hmm. That's not, I mean, that would not be a catastrophic, catastrophic visit. It turns into a catastrophic problem when you don't, when you don't do the annual visits. What about that situation? Well, what do you what What do you want to do with that situation? I don't even. I, I I'm just I'm posing the problem. I don't. See, I, think, I don't know. I think that the premise of the question is where we're going wrong here. Okay. Because the premise of your question relies on this woman having been irresponsible. She had a lump. She didn't get it checked out. Or she didn't have a lump. She didn't get it checked out. She didn't do her regular checkups. And all of a sudden, one day, they discover a lump, and the treatment is expensive. What do we do about this? Um, well. What Obama's going to do, say, well, you didn't, do, you, didn't, you didn't get checkups, you didn't do this, well, we're going to have to limit our coverage. You didn't live right. You didn't do what you're supposed to do. You, uh, what, what did you do that caused the lump? We have put out guidelines on what you can do to avoid breast cancer. Did you do those? That's what it's going to come to. But there are two issues. There's the one woman who's, who has the lump and is irresponsible, may even have health insurance. I'm, then, not, wait, then I'm not saying she's been irresponsible. I, we have freedom. If she doesn't want to go to the doctor, she doesn't have to go to the doctor. But why should everybody else have to pay for her? I understand that, but there are some people who will make an election not to go to a doctor. Yeah. There are some people who simply cannot afford to go to the doctor, and it becomes catastrophic, and then it is enormously expensive for whoever. I think, I think there is a myth uh, in this country about all the people who don't get medical treatment. I, I don't think I think that's part of the sales pitch here. Um, I've talked to a number of doctors, surgeons, ER, intensive care, patient comes in, they get treated, whether they can pay or not, and they're sent a bill if they don't have insurance. And they make arrangements with the hospital to pay it off over time, and if they don't, then the car repossessors head out, take the car, what have you. Uh, people get treated in this. You walk into the emergency room, by law, you have to get treated. People get health care in this country, whether they have insurance or not. We have the best health care system in the world. We don't need to start making giant fixes based on assumptions that there's a whole bunch of people getting sick and not being treated. It's not the case. So, in your view, we don't need to fix that. There's nothing to be fixed in the health care system from a, from a government standpoint. Uh, well, <clears throat> we don't need an overhaul. Uh, and we certainly don't need Obama's reforms. We don't need the government running health care. We don't need the government telling doctors what specialty they're going to go into. We don't. How are you going to insure 47 million people and cover them with no new doctors? And he's putting squeezes on doctors. He's going to squeeze doctor fees and so forth. This, Obama's plan is not about health care. It is about control. Obama's plan is about reorienting the American society and the American private sector. It is the single one thing that government could then have control over every aspect of our lives and our behavior. Now, so I gave you an answer. Catastro deal with catastrophic. De that's what scares everybody. Look, at if, 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 if getting health care coverage for people, Greta, was so important. I did, I ran some numbers. 12 million people in this country, so that the number that I found, literally are too poor to have insurance at all, and they're unemployed and so forth. Uh, for $29 billion, you could cover those 12 million people for a year. We just spent $700, $800 billion in a stimulus. Now, if health care is so important, and these people without health insurance, without coverage, so important. Why not 29, 30 billion in the stimulus money to insure them? Why a trillion dollars to take everybody out of their current plans, enroll them in a public option that no government official will be part of? Well, that may be more cost effective if you insure the 47 million. If we did it, that. But, but not all those 47, some of them are illegal aliens. Well, some whatever. of them I, don't. I picked the big what? number, I picked the umbrella number. Okay, fine, do yeah. that. D d but we could have, we, 12 million people who don't have insurance could today have it if just $30 billion of stimulus money had been spent on it. This is not about insuring people. I, I don't, I know this sounds radical itself. Um, I, I'll tell you another truth. Uh, you know, Obama said last night, I don't have to worry about health care. I, best pro health care program in the world, this is not about me, this is not about, it's all about him. 
every, every aspect of his administration is about him. The press cover it as though it's about him. He talks about all the great plans that the elected officials have, members of Congress, the Senate, himself. And it's true, they do. They have a smorgasbord of health care plans they can choose from, all paid for by the taxpayers. Do you know not one of them is government run? Every health care plan a senator chooses or a congressman chooses is run by a private sector insurance company. Government does not run their health care. And they're not going to opt out of that and join us in the public option. It isn't going to be any good. Here's one for you. I read this on the internet yesterday at theamericanthinker.com. Under Obama's plan, would Ted Kennedy have gotten the treatment for his brain tumor that he was able to get because of his own private insurance and his private wealth? Meaning, it, meaning he would not under a government plan? Obviously not. Obama has said as much in the ABC special. Well, when they, you know, if it costs too much uh, and they're you know, end of life, uh, give them a pill, give them a pain pill. Loop them out so they don't know what's happening, they don't feel the pain of their disease. The, it, it makes perfect sense. If the government is going to decide who gets health care and who doesn't, there's going to be criteria. Why invest all the money to treat somebody 76 to 80 or older with a terminal disease? The government's going to say, it's not worth our investment to treat you. As the former Democrat governor of Colorado said, Richard Lamb, we've, got, we've arrived here. You old people have a duty to die and get out of the way. And the vast majority of health care money expenses are spent by the elderly. Makes sense. End of life, or they get close to it, monitoring their health more closely. Young people, uh, immortal, they don't, they're, not, they're not worried about dying. They're worried about a severe traffic accident or some other catastrophe befalling them. They're not worrying about terminal diseases. So they go to the doctor as much. They don't, they don't uh, spend as much time in the doctor's office as uh, elderly people do. So I said earlier, they say health care is a right, but anything the government can take away from you is not a right. And if they can deny you health coverage, which they're going to, they have to, everybody's not going to be covered, then it can't possibly be a right. And what was wrong with this press conference last night was that it made sound like everybody's going to get whatever health care they want. Just may have to be done a little bit more efficiently with fewer tests, maybe fewer tonsils taken out so the surgeons don't get rich. But everybody's going to get covered. It's going to be gold-plated, and a couple millionaires are going to pay for it. And it's just the exact opposite, Greta. What do you make of the big, the big push to get it done now before the recess instead of, you know? <laughs> so people don't find out what's in it. The, and it's a, it, it's a little late for that now because the polls are already in a majority position showing opposition to this plan. These members of Congress and members of the administration are going out doing town meetings. Their constituents, their voters know more about what's in the plan than they do. Well, they don't read it. <laughs> They're being laughed at. Russ Carnahan in St. Louis was laughed at by his audience. Kathleen Sebelius, Health and Human Services Secretary, went down to Reserve, Louisiana, and the first question she got, you are not socialized in my country. And she was taken aback. She had no clue. She, she, you know, the, the, Obama's God, all of his cabinet and czar people are God Jr. They live in the bubble of D.C. thinking everybody is just loving Obama and has this tremendous respect and they don't, and they, whatever he says, is, and that's, now the magic's not working anymore. He can't pull it off. The power of his personality cannot overcome the truth that he has not done one thing for anybody. You go out and ask the unemployed, what's Obama done for you? How's that hope and change working for you? What's he done for you? And then ask him, what's he done to you? He made it easier for you to get a job? Or has he made it harder for you to get a job? And obviously he's made it harder. There's, and there's another reason why he doesn't want, I, I, I can't prove this, of course, but I wouldn't be surprised if today, tomorrow, and through the August 7th break, Rahm Emanuel and Obama bring up some of these Democrats, some of these blue dogs, and say, you have seen what's happened to some of these congressmen, town meetings. If you don't get this done, you go home in August, you do your town meetings and meet with constituents, they are going to rip you to shreds over this, and there's going to be footage of it, and it's going to be on TV, and it's going to be radio, and you're going to be a laughing stock. We know you want more of Rush tomorrow night. You're going to get it. In part two, Rush goes on the record about soon-to-be ex-governor Sarah Palin and her sudden resignation. That and more tomorrow night.